This is a uh, Akai GXC 706, a 70s, late 70s, sort of 77, 78 uh, cassette player. Um, Dolby B noise reduction, um, the old mechanical type or piano keyboard type um, mechanism. This was given to me about five years ago, I think, and it's been kicking around at work, and I brought it home to uh, have a look at it. Um, it's quite surprising. She doesn't look like it's done any work at all. The heads look like they've never been used. You know, the heads don't look like they've had any tapes to them at all. Um, I've been uh, using it. Um, it's, I've had to adjust the azimuth to suit um, well, my, or match it up with my reference um, Technics cassette deck which is what I tend to do with all my cassette decks I buy. I set them to one standard tape, so everything sort of... There's no mismatch between tape head alignment and anything. Um, it's got the early type of uh, VU meters. Um, it's a uh, the slow acting... Um, shouldn't have done that. Play, stupid thing. Um, it's, isn't it? It's got, yes, as I say, it's got the VU meters. It's got a peak... Um, you can see a peak LED indicator there, which indicates a, a peak of uh, plus 7 dB, uh, which is a bit high, really, because that's well beyond what the tape heads, I think, can be output anyway. Um, it not works nicely, but there is a problem with the speed. The speed is running very slightly fast, and what I'm going to do now is uh, attempt to uh, set the speed of the uh, motor correctly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to... Uh, I've got a recording of a, uh, a one kilohertz tone. I'm going to play that back and then feed it into that um, signal generator, that Rakel signal generator up, up, up there, and adjust the motor until I in, it indicates one kilohertz. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this tape out and find my tapes. One of them here somewhere, and all this junk is a tape for setting head speed, um, tape speed, and it's got azimuth adjustments on it as well. Uh, I don't know where to put it somewhere safe. Oh, I know where it is. It's buried. There it is. In the box of... Okay, not very easy one handed. This is an old AD46 TDK cassette. The good advantage of these AD46 tapes is that uh, they're very short, but they're also actually slightly, a slightly thicker tape, and they seem to last very well. They're very hard in comparison with something like a C90. So what I'm going to do is put that in and fast forward it a bit because the first the first tone is 10 kilohertz, and that's used for azimuth adjustment, which has already been done. So I'm going to fast forward it, and I'm going to come around the back here and connect the signal generator to the output of the one of the outputs of the. Uh, Cassette player. Uh, let's have a look. Mm. So, that's still 10 kilohertz. You probably can't hear that with the microphone in here. So that's a maximum output level. No, it's still 10 kilohertz. I'll put the selector. It's by a manual tape selector on these. They don't have the automatic identification selectors. Okay, that's the 1 kilohertz turn. So I'll leave that to run a bit and have a look at the uh, output of the, on the uh, signal generator. What well, you can see there, it's slightly fast. Slightly over 1 kilohertz. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the... You can see there, just in here where my fingernail is, there's a, there's a little pot inside this motor and that sets the speed of the motor. And the first thing I'm going to do, because these are all cassette decks, there's no... Uh, all this stuff here has got mains on it. So I'm going to chuck a... A cloth over that so I don't get a belt whilst I'm starting to stick a metal screwdriver in there. Put that over there. Uh, and then I need a uh, small electrical screwdriver. Like that. Um, so we'll look, that would probably be ideal. That will come there. And then they come in the back of the motor. around for the pot. Yeah, the screwdriver might be a bit small. Oh, I think I've got it. Okay, I'm going to have a tweak. You can hear the pitch dropping off. Okay, it's uh, so if I speed it up, there's the frequency going up, so it's obviously too fast. I'm looking for one kilohertz. Mm. 
down a bit more. Oh, that's too far. It's a bit of a very sensitive adjustment. This Actually, the pot might be a bit dirty. It's a bit of a little wiggle to get any muck off the pot. Let's try again. Very, very jumpy. Ah, there we nearly there. But you take the screwdriver and it will jump down too far. I don't think I'm going to get it spot on a thousand. Oh, there you go. Well, it's gone out. As soon as I took the screwdriver out, it's gone back up again. It's a very, very sensitive adjustment. You probably find the pot needs a bit of contact cleaner in there. I'm loath to squirt any in there because it gets on the brushes of the motor. It's fairly stable. Give the motor a tap. They're settled out just under under the frequency I want, at the speed I want, so another tweak. Let's get the pot on back some forwards rub. I think what I'm gonna try and do is stick a bit of contact cleaner in there. I think that's gonna to have to come on. Alright, if I take that screwdriver out, but it's gonna to go too slow. It's out now. Ah. Well, that's pretty good. So there you go, the speed's set now. So that's good, that's, that's what I wanted to achieve on this. Uh, just a quick run through the uh, internal workings. The standard uh, multicoloured spaghetti inside. Uh, you've, got, uh, you've got the Dolby system here, the Dolby B noise traps here, the traps of the, uh, an oscillator and things. Um, You've got Dolby chip there. You've got the um, selector switch for um, different tape positions here, which alter the, the equalisation and the bias at the same time. You've got uh, all. The, you've got master bias settings here, which set your uh, master bias, and then you trim each each bias individually. So you set your ferrochrome tape, your chrome, and your lithium tapes there, and then you set the sort of balance there. So it's bias is equal left to right. And you've got the playback levels and record level pots all over the place here. This is your record playback switch. If you buy one of these old Dexon, when you press play, the meters are jumping around and it's just sort of going nuts. So the first thing you want to do is put some switch cleaner in these switches and work them backs and forwards. Record play, record play. You might find that will cure the problem and it will be absolutely fine after that. Uh, yeah, sort of old mechanical belt driven. Um, drive system, very reliable and very quiet on this device as well. What I've always liked about these, the, the, the actual back of the cassette is lit with that festoon bulb there, which is, always looks quite nice. Um, mechanical tape counter, no memory stop or anything like that. Um, selectable inputs for a condenser microphone, record levels. Um, that's about it. Um, as I say, in a good, good condition machine, will perform fairly well. You don't, you won't expect it to perform anywhere near as good as a modern cassette deck. The heads weren't as good. Uh, this has got one of the uh, the ferrite uh, heads in it, which tended to, from memory, not have so good um, high frequency response. But uh, as I say, this one's in pretty good condition and uh, a nice classic sort of 1970s, 1980s cassette deck. Thanks for watching.